Paul, I'm really happy that we can have this discussion today about your work. And what I'd like to do is uh, go back to some of the earlier days, talking about some of your background in art, your studies, what you did, leading up to, I guess, the first body of work we'll be looking at is in 2010. Um, thank you, Roberto, for the invitation. Uh, well, I studied arts, uh, I graduated in 2004, and I was working, investigating and learning about photography at the time. And from, from then on, I've been working mostly with photography since 2010 or 2009, the years we are talking about, the works we are talking about uh, more deeply. And um, I had some time during that period to, to work a bit or maybe a lot with uh, cinema. So I got al also the experience of uh, movie making and things like that. And it was very important for my formation, I would say, because I, um, after that I've been working until now with the idea of narrative and with the idea of language and um, landscape. And my work became very cinematographic in a way, um, I could say. And uh, from 2010 on, um, I dedicated, uh, I left photography behind for a while and I was dedicating myself to written texts and to the investigation of the, this idea of uh, reading or um, giving, giving um, a story to be read and not giving it at the same time. So the idea of having an error or a mistake or something between the text and the person who is reading it. So I, I, I work with um, uh, devices which I developed, very simple devices, paper devices for group reading, which wouldn't let uh, an individual read it all in any way. And then with paper pieces, uh, which uh, had all this text available there, uh, this written text, uh, printed text in Japanese paper, which I was using since then, and I'm using still. And um, so you had all this text and you could, couldn't really read it all. So this idea of, of, uh, of the, the problem in communication in some sense, and it, it goes to, the photo to photographies afterwards. So could you give us a context for the work we're looking at uh, to start off with, around the work that was produced around 2010, 2009? Yeah. Yes, uh, well, I, I could uh, start um, saying that this, this written pieces in paper uh, started being uh, produced in a, in a big uh, scale, I would say. So I, I had this already had this this uh, way of working that I, I wrote texts so I don't use uh, other people's texts. Most of the time I write it uh, when I'm in dealing with a specific uh, landscape. This is the idea of landscape is the idea of context in some sense, ecosystem or something like that. And uh, then I have all this paper and I and I produce this this pieces and it started to accumulate in my studios. So I had this lots of papers everywhere and I started to, in 2012, I think, uh, yes, I'm sure in 2012, I started to install these papers in the spaces. So um, then I created my first like photo installations, I call it photo installations, which are uh, specific places that I chose, which I was dealing with, with a, which I knew at the time or not, I, I was dealing with it every day sometimes, and I was installing it in a, in a way of trying to create a kind of presence in these this places, uh, which were very empty spaces, very uh, full in some sense, and uh, very empty at the, the same time. So I was trying to, to put uh, presence inside of it. Would these be like interpretive spaces that the audience can fill in themselves? Yes, uh, just like the, the, the words in the paper devices, uh, the images uh, work the same. So in this sense I say it's very cinematographic because you have a possible or many possible narratives inside of it. So it needs to be int interpreted by, by the viewer. Um, Sure. 
Okay, so the images we're showing now to the viewer as we as we work through this are are about that first project. Mm, I could say it's the first project I came back to photography. So I, I, I left it behind for a while and then I came back in this period of 2012 and then went on with uh, photography for a while. Yes. So what ended into the next series of work? Yes, uh, it leads to, to the series of work I developed in Munich, uh, which is from 2014. Uh, I, I was also dealing with paper at that time, but not white written paper. Uh, I decided to use black paper at that time because, exactly because of the uh, lack of communication, I think more, more cultural communication than really spoken communication. Uh, I was I was dealing with at that time in, in Munich, so papers um, uh, were black at that time. So it's a kind of silence. It's a kind of a, uh, also a way of saying, okay, it's not possible to to uh, create relation, deeper relation in this moment in this atmosphere. So I decided. Uh, to uh, with the, all this black paper, I was trying to make uh, also installations and in spaces. I made it, but uh, the most important series at the time was the series um, I call it Mankan series, which is uh, I for the first time I had bodies in my pictures because of the monumentality of Munich, I think, and then I inserted these bodies as the papers before, so the presence became these bodies um, repeated, so always the same body, so you get like an idea of, of a machine, or of something that is not that, um, that uh, live, you know, and then you have this, this very cinematographic city uh, series, uh, which is Mankan series. And the Munich series then, led into what work came after that? Well, after that, I have developed a way of working which uh, made me look to the places I was, the landscape, the, the idea of landscape, and produce works. So after that, I, have an exhib I had a solo show in Rio de Janeiro, uh, which I also, I did the same thing, but in my own city. So I, I decided to work, uh, at the, the gallery was at this place in Copacabana, very traditional and very important neighborhood in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, very known to. And I was there uh, working with people all around, and the, the gallery had this big, big window, so I could, um, make cinema with the window, so I used free radio. Um, I had all these interviews from people from the next, uh, the, the window in front of us, uh, telling their stories, and people in the, the gallery could um, sit in their chairs from their houses and uh, look at their windows and uh, have this, this uh, relation to Copacabana way of living in a sense. So it was the, my maybe, um, the moment I, I acknowledged I was always working with this context based but I didn't need to to go abroad or to change or to change city I was doing it to, just next door well the, the exhibit you had here in in Vienna a few years back that was probably about um, let's see this is what 2017 so it was about 2015 right if I remember correctly, you were talking about there was a number of videos um, on the walls. They were facing mm -hmm. each other, and then other work, and th that was more about identities. If I, yeah. Yes, um, the exhibition in Vienna was very specific because it was not a show I was there producing. I had just opened a show in Portugal two weeks before. And then I, I had this the show in, in Vienna, and I, I made like I collected some works and uh, put under a specific theme I wanted to, to work with at that time. 
So it was the, the identity, yes, but a feminine identity. So I had these two videos in the, the beginning, which I had produced in 2012. Um, and then I had uh, paperworks, which I had produced in Munich, also portraits, so all these portraits. And then I had part of this, this series of installation I just talked about. Uh, and also uh, an audio work, which um, I produced specifically for this exhibition. Uh, at the same moment, same moment we had a very uh, hard question happening. It happens all the time, but it was very urgent in Europe and in Austria at that time, which was the refugees question. It still is. So I made some notes about it also, uh, trying to contextualize some images because I really had these this people uh, who lived abroad, these women that I photographed uh, in some places and uh, they were there represented uh, in some way. I've heard work now, uh, especially after the work in Portugal last, last summer, has been building around the reconstruction of skin, the body surface, using ceramics. Uh, could you, because that brings it up to current time, could you be talking about that a little bit, how that work is developed? Yes, um, well, so to, to talk about current works, I, I need to start with 2015 in Portugal, the first uh, big exhibition in Portugal, I, I would say which was this installation I made with tiles on the ground um, for people to walk on. So I, at that time, I took the, um, I was uh, looking at the idea, I, when I was invited, I, th I thought, okay, uh, I need to talk about the relation between Brazil and Portugal. So I have a, a nice space, an old uh, big house in, in Portugal and a nice uh, art center. So I decided to uh, research how is uh, this story between Portugal and Brazil told um, nowadays to students. So I researched uh, students' books, official students' books, and I worked with their, the images from these books uh, with the same color, same size, everything. So I put this on the tiles and put it on the ground. This was the idea of making it uh, possibilities of addition of this history. This, so you have one, one way of telling it and you have many possible ways. So I was dealing with that. So I go from, from self-identity maybe to cultural identity very deeply. And uh, it keeps on. So I keep working in this, in this. I would say it is still current, this work. And then uh, from this, I developed a second work, which is important, um, which is a video work where I have an indigenous man telling his story, like he, just like he was telling the story of his country, but he's telling the story of his land to his people. But he's doing this in his language. So I come back to the, 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 the uh, research of language in a s different way, in, in a way that you, you can't know what he's talking about, because he's talking in Tucano, which is the name of his ethnicity. So I have this video with white people. White people is any person which is not indigenous for indigenous people. So they call it white people, white men. So I have, I have all these white men uh, trying to repeat the 15 minute story that Doetiro uh, Tucano tells in Tucano. Uh, a story that they don't know what they're talking about, uh, what it, is the meaning of that. So it was, it's a very important and current work for me. And after that, I made a, uh, another work in Portugal, which I, I really want to make it bigger, uh, which was the, this research you, I told you before, it, you, you were telling me, it's about the, not about the skin color, but it's about many things. So I asked local people in Portugal, I went to a specific center where, where people use ceramics, a specific village, and I asked people, uh, local people, to build with uh, different uh, colors of clay. So I, I prepared white, yellow, black, and brown clays. And 
not brown, sorry, red. So all the ethnicities, we could say, all the uh, races, we could say, not the main ones, uh, colors. So I asked people to, to get this clays and try to make their own skin color with, with the mixture of it. So with, with the mixture they got, I asked them to build their own uh, roof tile with their legs. There is this, uh, this story that the roof tiles during colonization uh, were made in the, on the upper legs of the slaves. So uh, I asked them to, to build, we built our uh, legs uh, with our own colors. And then um, it's, a, it's a very important work for me uh, leading, uh, dealing with this cultural aspect, this finding out uh, representation in Brazil, the, the, all the, the ideas or the questions that came from 2015 work that were, were coming before, but they were very, they got very um, uh, defined in that moment. So, uh, yeah, this, I, I could say that those are my current works, uh, most important current works. And, okay, so, and some of that work will be on, connected here on the VASA site you know, as part of this exhibition. And then also there's a link to your webpage, which has more videos, more work that the viewer can go back and review all of this if they wish. So I want to thank you uh, for taking the time and talking about your work. And um, I'm sure that it's, it will be an interesting experience for a lot of the viewers. Uh, thank you, Roberto, for that. And um, let's keep working. Thank you.